I'm Daniel, this is Asheville, and this is Asheville Weekly, episode 156. This is our three-year anniversary of documenting, sharing, and telling you all about our challenges, our emotions, our low points, our high points. Firstly, I wanna thank everyone who's been watching. Asheville Weekly only started out of us trying to recreate the success of Day in the Life. Click here to watch that video. There have been many a time when we thought Asheville Weekly would stop for a number of reasons. The main one being the resources it takes to bring out a feature film like this week in and week out. My time, the team's time, everything that's going on in the business and producing this, but we have managed thus far. But one thing about Asheville Weekly, the resource it takes mean that we struggle to put out standalone videos and other formats. This is the reason we are trying to continually grow and improve on our existing team. But here we are, three years down the line, still sharing, still producing, still trying to up the bar. Now there are a number of people who have contributed and worked on Asheville Wheatley and I'd like to thank them. Tim, Frighty, Jay, Will, Glenn, Adam, Kent, Meds, Hamza, Connor and a special shout out to Ara the coach who for two years held it all together and was the brainchild behind putting in all our processes and getting those final watch throughs done and getting the videos out on time. We're not throwing any parties, it's business as usual and I cannot tell you how long Asheville Weekly will continue to run but what I can tell you is that we're thankful for all of you who watch it and follow on the journey and we have listened to you. We've produced a new intro, what we're gonna use moving forward, what takes into account the new services that we offer. I'm Daniel, and this is Asheville Weekly, episode 156, the three year anniversary. Monday morning, we're in the yard. The flow's on a delivery. I don't want to see where he's going with a forklift. I'm really not cut out for speed, man. I'm built for strength. What have we got here? Ah, Monday morning, and we're doing a delivery to our neighbors within the yard. Five bags of four to 20 mil limestone, a good start to the week. And also you see a couple of weeks back, we dropped a machine into the company, which have started using us for all their plant hire now, who we do all the grabs and concrete for. And now they're taking another machine at the same site. Flo's giving me a lift back because he drove off without me and then said it's good for you to run on a Monday morning. Ben is back in the yard after dropping off that machine. We're just moving the bins out the way. The lads are doing a bit of gardening. So in our making our way up and down the track and we're taking away all the weeds and vegetation so the yard looks nice and spotless. As soon as we've done all this moving around, We've got to make 25 bags of Type 1 using the bagging machine. Material isn't going out till Wednesday morning, but we'll be loading it the end of play on Tuesday. So what we're going to do is make it today, sit it down, and then we'll load it tomorrow afternoon for Wednesday morning. Well, I'll give you a little update, as I haven't mentioned it in a couple of weeks. Now we put the project on hold at the moment because we want to wait for the windows because the work was accelerating at a pace and the window is not going to be here for a few weeks. So we thought the best thing to do was take the manpower out of here and put it on the refurbishment project so the work can be pushed on rather than getting this to a point and we can't do anything with it anyway. So let's see what's happening at the refurbishment project. In the vaulted ceiling area in the kitchen, we are using a galvanized flexible band. This fixes to the roof trusses and we then use this as a firm fixing for the ventilation pipes. Yard's busy today. Loads of third parties coming in collecting. Business is business. Anybody wants to come and collect the material, come and get it. You saw a couple of weeks back, I had the meeting with my good friend Owen from MP Moran's, where we were at MP Moran's bright and early this morning delivering material. I was downstairs doing a video watch through of weekly that's coming out on Sunday. Friday isn't here, so I was doing it with Hamza. But then I got a call from Manny at Elite Paving. He's had a new job starting in Hemel and he needs a one and a half ton dumper. Ben is dropping off a 20 yard bin. He's gonna come back to the 
yard, put the flatbed on. He's going to go to the refurbishment project and he's going to take the dumper and drop that off at Manny's job. A lot of people in the comments talking about building impossible with Daniel Asheville on Nat Geo. Thank you to everyone who watched. Some people saying that they don't have Sky and they don't have Virgin. Unfortunately, there's not really a lot I can do. It's not available on Disney Plus for 12 months. It's only on linear. Get me, that means TV. See, I know all those media words now. I know in South Africa, it's out already. In America, it premieres on the 19th of October where they're gonna have all the episodes in one night back to back from 6 p.m. But it will be released in every country on TV, not online, not just yet. Time is 3.15. PM. The volumetric that you saw me looking at a couple of weeks back, one of the funders has come back with an improved rate. We've managed to get it down to 119,000, including the purchase of the vehicle. So the entire finance period of three years, we're going to be paying 20 grand in finance is better than what we had previously. I remember when we first started buying new tippers of Scania, we were getting rates of 2.6%. Those days are long gone and the market is where the market is. I'm just waiting for one other lender to come back to us and when they give us the rate, whichever one's better, we're gonna send a deposit over and get that delivered to the yard. The time is 6.38. Having a look around in the yard and there are two Scania repair vehicles here. Hmm. How we doing? What's wrong with that one? Lamps. Scania are in fixing the little lamps. So Scania sent two people here to tackle it simultaneously. The day is not over yet. I'm gonna head to the gym, try to clear my mind. But that is it for Monday in the yard. It's Tuesday morning. On our own again. I'm on my way to Ilford in East London. I told you about the cube crushing equipment which I needed to pay for and collect. Went in the office, I was like, where's what is our stuff, man? What's going on here? Why are we not using it? Why isn't it calibrated? And I worked out that I had completely forgotten and I hadn't got accounts to pay for it yet. So I called the company we're buying it from and I said, sorry, my mistake, too much going on. I didn't instruct the accounts department and it wasn't clear. They said they still have the equipment. I paid it yesterday, sent them confirmation and I'm heading there this morning. Yesterday I told you about Manny's job where he needed a dumper immediately. Well, Ben managed to go and collect the dumper yesterday, but he didn't have the driving hours for him to drop it off. But it doesn't change things because it was loaded onto the truck and now he's going to drop it off first thing this morning at 7 a.m. And the grabs are scheduled for 10. So Manny should have enough time to still bring all the broken out concrete from the back of the property to the front so that we can have back to back free grabs and clear the site. How heavy is that? It's quite heavy. Right, I think I, I'm not sure I fully thought this one through. Why you leave this one? No, 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 I'm taking it, I'm taking it, I'm taking it. Also got six of these tanks. Oh, you think it's more than a ton? Let me see. <laughs> so this is the actual crusher, and the other one is the control mechanism for the crusher. <laughs> I'm glad I was looking what I was doing. Look at the size of that spiderweb, boy. Oh, just a slump test kit, okay. We'll take the tray as well. I think I'll take the scale. Just the scale. Yeah, and then put the rest to go on the lorry. That stuff there that is on going on a flatbed. Like I don't really want that on the flatbed. Yeah, I'll take that too. So this is one, two. So this is five tanks now. So there must be another tank outside somewhere. How many do you need? Well, how many will you give me? <laughs> These go inside the tank and the cube sits on top of it. And this lot, I'm gonna try and put them in there. Let's see how we get on. But it's not perfect. But some of the equipment here, I wouldn't want this on the back of the flatbed flying around. And I wouldn't really want them in the cab with Ben. So Ben will come down here tomorrow morning and collect the rest. I need to think about start setting up an area, getting this all recalibrated so we can start testing concrete cubes ourselves. I just went to look at another job before I came back to the yard of a golf course. You see us look at jobs that Sam the architect brings to us. 
but this is a different architect we've worked with in the past. We work with them at 334 Chiswick High Road, a project where we converted a commercial building into nine flats. Click here to watch that video. And we also work with them on a NHBC new build. Recommendation is the best form of introduction because they can in introduce us to the client and say, we know these guys, they do exactly what they say on the tin, they are reputable and we have known them for years, they're not going anywhere. Now I'm gonna put some figures together and see if our view and the client's budget aligns. Trying to get back to the yard and with Terry being away, the trains are all going through me. So I was waiting for the train and sand and gravel to confirm for next week, because it's normally on Wednesday or Thursday, but we wanted to bring in a train of type one, but the train of type one, you have to tell them for today. And they were actually on the Zoom call when I was talking to them, booking the train, and they said we need to do Thursday. So luckily I jumped on the phone to the other company who do the sand and gravel, and they said next week we're looking at coming on Tuesday. I need to get back to the yard because I want to have a look over the grab lorries because when I spec'd all the grab lorries new when they arrive they have a quick hitch at the end of the hydraulic hose there's a fitting and we can detach the bucket relatively easily when they came they all work like that but as time's gone by and hoses have gone and buckets have got damage I don't think all of them are working at the moment and I'm talking to a company about supplying them with all their bags now I don't want to come unstuck calling it on and I've got to supply 200 bolt bags a day we don't have the infrastructure in place so I'm going to take a have a look over the bagging plant and on all of those grab lorries I'm going to ensure that the quick hitch is working and all the drivers have the hook I bought a hook attachment for every grab as well check in the toolbox to see if that's there and make sure everything is in place and I would like to probably make up about a thousand bags in stock if we get the order and then keep topping them up so we never run out in case there's like a day where we don't have time to make the bags forward for the Gloria Sparta and Asheville. Busy in the yard. We've got lorries loading with Type 1 going out. We've got a cement delivery at the same time and the company have come in to repair the aircon on the LH60. So the sensor was damaged and that meant it didn't know what temperature it was. So it was pumping out hot air when you put the aircon on. So it's not an easy to get to sensor, is it? No. But Where is it? What's that one? The old one? The old one. Underneath the cold bit stops it from freezing up detects when it gets cold and then allows it to defrost so it wasn't defrosting so basically uh. the radiator in there will then just turn to a sheet of ice lose all your airflow aircon becomes inefficient and we got a new one yeah yeah new one's in i've just and a new one's in, in. new we're one's poked in yeah we're nice flo can now have aircon again when he's offloading the train here is a grab this fit in here and this fit in here is quick release so you release this fit in, you release that fit in, and there should be two pins. Where are they? Oh, they're covered in grease. Well, at least it's getting greased. There's a pin here, there's one pin, and there's another pin here. If you pull those pins out, you should be able to jiggle this, to spin this round, and raise the crane, and the bucket should stay where it is on the ground as it separates. And then you need to attach another piece and attach the hook to that so this was specced on all the grabs when it came but two of them got damaged so two of them are with it and two of them are without it the ones which were off we've got them in the workshop and we're trying to free them up and take all the dirt off them see if they can get moving again to make sure that we don't have to buy new ones and then we're going to need to order some new pins and have a look at it and see what other parts we need we're going to let this lorry go back out to work and have a look at what's in the workshop okay so here's one of them that one's been freed. This one has been freed and taken apart. And this is all the dry grease and other bits which were beaten off it. Let me try and explain how this goes together. This bolts onto the crane. And this bit here is what bolts onto the bucket. So we need to put the pin in here. So the pin goes in here. And this one holds the pin. Jiggle it about. Right. So yes. So. Right, and then this, turn this, this fits into here. There we go. And this turns. So this, oh, where are we? This turns, there we go. And this turns that way. Once it turns, you put the pins in. And here, you put the other pin that way. And then there's bolts going through here 
what have connected this to the crane and there's bolts going through this which have connected it to the bucket now what we have ordered is these pins we've ordered them if i spin this back round line it up and now there we go and we have ordered this bolt and this pin so this set because this is damaged if you look down it you can see that it's not straight it's taken a bit of a beating so we've ordered these parts we freed these up so hopefully with all the new parts we should be able to put them back together now two of the lorries we've completely removed this and bolted the bucket straight onto the crane so we're gonna to have to dismantle the bucket and put this back in place of it and get some hydraulic hitches and we should be able to take the buckets on and off relatively easily. And when you take the bucket off, you then put that fitting on. So you take the bucket off and that goes onto the hook. I want it easier for the lads so they can disconnect the bucket when they're moving bags, quick hitch, take off the bucket, use this, and then put this back in the toolbox on the side of the lorry. And now the lads are just trying to make a bit of space in the container for my delivery <laughs> of the concrete crushing bits. A couple of lads are loading type one for the morning. I mentioned it last week briefly, the TV Choice Awards. No, not the Oscars, that's next year. Building Impossible has been nominated on the massive shortlist. So this first stage of voting is so you can actually get onto the shortlist and be at the award ceremony which I believe is in February of next year. I'm not saying I'm gonna win, but I stand a better chance if I'm in the room, in the arena. We're flat out busy, man. When I started making content on YouTube, I just wanted to share my journey with the world and build a name for both myself and my companies. When I started, I didn't realize how powerful it was and the difference it would make, but I had found a new way to express myself and share my experiences and milestones. I thought I was alone with some of my passions and interests, but YouTube showed me that I am not, and it's given me a voice. And as time grows by and I grow in confidence, I become more creative with the limitless freedom that YouTube offers. I never think to myself, oh, this video is too long or it's too short. I know the audience value the content and they will judge each video on its own merits, unlike some other digital platforms where people only judge on current trends. Not only have I been able to build up a substantial following and generate revenue, I feel like I made a real difference in people's lives, inspiring them and helping them move forward in a world which can be very difficult to navigate. I feel like the audience are fully invested in the journey and genuinely care. Now, the second I knew is when I put out a video on protesters turning up at this yard and shutting my business down. Now, it was a very challenging time for me, but the online and proactive support from the audience helped me through the very difficult time. Now, when I have something to celebrate or a challenge, I think of my YouTube family, better known as the community, and how I'm gonna share it with them. My YouTube community's comments are priceless and irreplaceable to me. Unlike other social media platforms where I think all people do is follow trends and have much shorter attention spans. It's Wednesday morning, I'm in the yard. The train is here. Something very important I need to check. And that is if Flo has aircon. Flo, is the aircon working? Yeah. The majority of the wagon is empty. What Flo's doing, he's just trying to offload the little bits which are left in the bottom of it. We did a whole video when we talked about exactly how we offload. There we go. But it's still rebar coming out the ground. That would have slashed the tire. Yesterday you saw me collecting the concrete testing equipment. Well, the bits I couldn't get, Ben has gone to collect them now. We 
we're a concrete lorry down today. We've got one in Southern Vulcanizing because the small chute on the back, just next to the hopper, it's come off. They have to fit that back on. We need it desperately. Tomorrow, we have about 180 meters on and we cannot cope with four lorries. We have a delivery of cement, which has just come in now. However, in order to offload the entire delivery of cement, the concrete, next concrete lorry to be back is Ollie. Ollie will have to take four tonne out of it and hopefully it coincides that as the um, cement tanker gets to the end of its offload, Ollie will reverse in and take the four tonne which will be remaining in this. And we have a fuel delivery of 20,000 litres of diesel. We're not ready to set the lab up, but I need to put it all somewhere safe so it doesn't get damaged and nobody hits it. Get it all in here, then we'll assess how much space we need. We're probably gonna make a entire 20 foot container a lab. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna insulate all the walls, put air conditioning, make sure there's fresh air in there, put some flooring down. But the actual cube crusher itself needs to be bolted down and it has weights in it. So. Once we have everything, then we can assess how we build the lab. The job you saw yesterday, we got all the hardcore out of Manny's job. This morning, both our new Volvos are on site. He's dropping the material off bright and early, not causing any delays. Service, I tell you, service. You've got everything you need to do the bags. Yeah. yeah, you don't need anything else. Trying to make sure this lorry is also ready for the bagged aggregate contract that we've got coming up. So Ben has the, the hooks on it full time. I forgot, I thought <laughs> he doesn't actually take the hook off. This one is 100% ready to start doing the bag deliveries. And once we get the parts that I told you about yesterday, then the grab should also be ready. As we reverse in, try not to write off my whip. Our second wheel think that we need to put lighting panel with the drivers, whatever, little fuse bolts for external somewhere here. I completely here. agree. Okay. David and I are going through some stuff at the refurbishment project. We had to work out the locations of the TV. Now the ground floor is pretty straightforward. If you remember previously, where you walk into the master bedroom, we had some cupboards. Well now those cupboards are gone. We were gonna have the TV at the foot of the bed, raising out of something at low level. But now there's that seating area in the master bedroom. The TV could well be on the wall there. In the master bathroom, we've asked the question, if there will be a waterproof 24 inch television, we fitted a couple of them, will there be one in the shower or will there be one next to the bath? Trouble is, we have a towel rail and then on the other side, we were gonna build a niche so you could house all your products. Bedroom free, the obvious solution is to have the television on the wall shed with the ensuite. But well, we actually wanted to build some cupboards there. And one of them would have been a door and then you could have opened the door and then you could have walked into the ensuite. If we put a television in those cupboards, you significantly reduce your cupboard space. However, you have the cupboard on the other side. In bedroom two, there's not really a lot of space for a television, but what you could do close to the entrance for the ensuite, you could put a movable bracket on the wall there, but you know, you might walk in and bang your shoulder against it, or you could put the television in the cupboard opposite the bed. But if you did put it in the cupboard opposite the bed, you're gonna lose hanging space. These are preferences and choices what the client has to make. We used to run Cat5 everywhere in the house. We're gonna be running Cat6 and Cat6A, and we're gonna be running optical cables to each of the televisions as well so we're trying to future-proof the house and we're also discussing what lighting system we're gonna use there was a delivery this is a good way to smash your desk these are the bolts from the system to connect to the crane and connect to the bucket but this isn't the actual new part of it what we needed so it's got one's got to come direct from the manufacturer and this has come from the supplier unfortunately I thought that puncture season was over but it is not we have seven repairs to do, and the tire fitter is gonna make a start on them.
more deliveries have just turned up. This is for the top of the water tanks on the volumetric. Somebody lost their lid. Now, the lorry is in some vulcanizing getting fixed, so it doesn't matter. But when it's full of water, if there's no lid on it, if you brake hard, the water comes splashing out of it. So I bought one to replace it, and I actually got a spare one as well to keep in stock. This delivery has just arrived from someone else to get the grabs ready to do the to put the hook on with the bags. So we have our pins. Let's see if we have... Oh, there we go. Clips, pin. Do we have our holding bolt? Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Oh, no. What? Ah, oh, am I going to... No, we fell in the gap. Oh, man, how am I going to... I ain't going to be able to get that. What's happening? Michael, my brother, you are, consider you you are considerably <laughs> older than me and you packed it in now. Hanging oh, around at the farm working. all day, retired. <laughs> I get more phone calls in a day now than I got when I was there. Oh really? Why is that? The lamppost has fallen down. Talked to your northern mate yesterday. Foxy. Foxy. Yeah. Fox Fox yeah. How is Foxy? It's good. He's yeah. He looks very, very prosperous looking. He big smile on his face. I know the smile you're talking about. So he's sending down, I think, ten or thirty machines to me. He said he needs to get them out of the arse. He got someone that can knows what they're doing to plant side of things down here. So hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, So you're saying Paul Fox, <laughs> Fox Plant Hire, who have a partnership with Asheville Plant Hire. You're saying that he wants someone proper on the job, so he's sending you 30 machines. He wants the managing director of Paley Plant to push it further, get his name out there in the London area. You and Paul Fox have done a deal, mm -hmm. and now he's with a proper plant hire firm in London, yeah? I'll give it back to you after 12 months of me getting it out there. But that's what you do with most of your lorries, isn't it? After 12 months, when you can't afford the finance, you give it back, isn't it? So... <laughs> <laughs> it's no good out there, though, is it? It's not the best, but we're... Uh... I ain't got as many lorries as you, do I? So you, you got to keep 75 lorries busy. You know what I mean? I've got to keep... How many lorries have I got? Four. Four, all right. Four. Cool. The rest are broke down. I need to get a couple of new machines for the railhead, so he's going to send me down some big machines for the railhead as well. I thought if a man like you wanted 30 machines and a couple of L860, you'd just go and buy them yourself, like straight away. Cash, money. Yeah, I would. Paul feels like he needs to, to push his business down in London, so he wants to come back to London. He wants to be in London. He wants to better talk like a cockney, doesn't he? Like me and you. Paul Fox wants help pushing his <laughs> 400 lorries and his 5,000 bits of kit. So what's going on on Saturday? What are you feeding me and when are you taking me? We're going to Spurs and we're going to have a sit-down meal. Who cancelled? Why did you invite me? And Owen's not going. Owen's going to a party. There we go. I knew, I knew that somebody else cancelled. That's why you invited me. I knew it. I knew it. No, I asked Terry, said he couldn't make it, he's on all of this. I said, ask Daniel, because it make, make him feel better. I said, all right, I'll ask Daniel. I asked your other salesman as well before you, but he said he couldn't be seen out with me as well. Which salesman's that? The plant man. Which one, what's his name? Um, Henry. Henry. I haven't even got a plant hire salesman. I will see you Saturday. See then. you Saturday, mate. Once again, bright and early this morning, half past six, we were in MP Moran's in Watford, delivering a load of material. The yard is looking fantastic. This big pile of material is now down. Excellent. Only lorries in are the pump and the baby grab. Baby grab's a specialist lorry. Sometimes a job comes on and it will be flat out for three months, like those small muses in Chelsea, what the eight before grabs can't get into. And other times it sits there and doesn't do a lot. I can't understand why the pump isn't out. We're doing more concrete than ever. A lot of people are using boom pumps and not the line pumps. I have no intention of buying a boom pump at the moment. We will only get a boom pump when we put the batch plant in. Yard is looking good. Done my little recce for operational perfection. Wheel wash working well as well. Time to have a shower. And by the way, it's Thursday and I'm in the yard. I'm gonna start the work on this bin. Now I thought this was a 20 yard bin. It's not. It's a 25 yarder. We haven't actually told everyone that we got a 25 yarder, so we're gonna have to make sure that we that it says 25 yard and not 20 yard on it, because obviously there's an additional cost. There's plenty of repair work needed, but the frame of it's a strong bin. Like the area here. I said the other day that we were gonna completely cut it out, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna cut out sections and put plates 
internally. Look, we've got bits at the bottom here where there's damage. On the side here, this is structural. We're definitely gonna have to put a new triangular piece here. We're gonna have to push the bin back together with the machine. We're gonna have to replace this with some box steel. Once again here, we're gonna have to put a triangular piece at the bottom right down here it's gone rusty we're gonna have to replace this and the mechanism on the side here the opening and closing has dropped down so this needs to be repaired and we need some box there also and there's a couple of areas internally like in the floor of it where we need to flatten and put a patch so it needs a bit of work but the frame of it is strong the wheels are good do a bit of work to this bin and this bin will give us another 10 years i was checking tire stock and we've been recutting repairing fixing punches but I've ordered a new set of tyres to be delivered first thing tomorrow morning because we haven't got any new tyres at all. So we should see Donovan tyres with a load full first thing in the morning and then they should take all our scrap. Quick one. Yeah. Now I know it's not true, but our good friend Michael O'Donovan called me this morning bright and early. And he reckons that you want to be associated with a proper firm in London and you've got 30 machines on the way to him. Now... <laughs> I know that ain't true, yeah. <laughs> no, he's not true at all. He's just not right in my head, is he? I'll message him in a minute, I'll just say, it's not 13, it's 40. Thank you. How was your day? Nah, just the usual, mate. Fighting the good fight. Got some going in for MOT. He had to order a bunch of tyres. Had to get deliveries in. Parts I need. I need bits for the grab. I need the rev switch for the skip lorry. The train got cancelled. Now we got three trains next week. The lorries got stuck on the job. It got sand when it was meant to be ballast and near. Um, just the usual, mate. Right, I'll rev him up. I'll give you buzz in a bit. Cheers, All right, pal. Bye. Sorry. I knew Paul Fox weren't sending machines to Michael, but I just had to make the call. So now Paul will give Michael some stress. As you heard, the train for today was cancelled. However, we're gonna have two trains of Type 1 next week, which is good because we're pretty busy and the Type 1, which is in the yard now, may not last that long. On Manny's job, he's finished with the dumper. So Ben has put the flatbed on and he's heading down there to load the dumper on and then he's going to take it back to the refurbishment project. Just talking to our CFO, Donica, you've seen in the past, we're gonna be importing decorative aggregates soon. So we're talking of a plum slate, gray slate, and a blue slate. Learning from the mistakes of the past, I've asked him to go into our system we run the lorries from and our accounting system, Sage, and add a revenue category for decorative aggregates and then the cost of it as well so we can clearly see the margins we make with importing and exporting decorative aggregates. Now we're gonna be selling it wholesale to any other companies who bag material. We're gonna be selling it to builders and merchants and we're gonna be selling it to just, you know, domestic clients who just want to do their driveway. So it's gonna be a broad array and it's not gonna be volumes like you see us doing of sand and type one. This is a lot more specialist and we have to handle it a lot more delicately. The time now is 11.54. I am going on to a Zoom at 12, but before that, today is the day of Building Possible with Daniel Ashfield on Nat Geo at 8 p.m. I am at the Intuit Dome, which is the new home of the LA Clippers. I work with the teams on the ground. It's another massive construction and engineering um, episode, which is so cool and I learned so much. So if you get a chance guys, um, give it a watch on uh, Sky Channel 129 Virgin 266. If you can't watch it at eight o'clock on a Thursday, it's on catch up. I'm not sure if it's still in top picks of the week on Sky, but it was for a little while. So if you can catch it, give it a watch. I'm going on to my Zoom. Out in the yard, going for a walk. Checking what's happening. A grapple has been put on a nine ton machine and Ben is now loading that and he is gonna deliver to site. Time is 7.18 p.m. I'm having a look at the cement tank. Ah, ow. 
The lads are going to a job in High Wycombe first thing in the morning. We've got 35 tonnes of cement. That silo holds 50 tonnes. And we have a cement delivery book for nine o'clock in the morning. He is already parked up outside the yard with 29 tonnes. Hopefully that gentleman can get offloaded and get on his way. I'm gonna try and head home now because Building Impossible with Daniel Asheville is on at eight o'clock and I am stood in the yard and I might not make it to watch my own show. So I'm gonna skedaddle. It's Friday morning and I'm on the way to the yard. I'm on hold to Volvo. And if I don't get through, by the time I go past the junction, I'm gonna veer off and I'm gonna go straight to Volvo. There are a couple of parts we need for one of the lorries and I don't want the parts maybe later. I don't want them after lunch and I don't want them on Monday by lunchtime. I need them now so we can put them on the lorry and we can get it sorted. The tire fitter, his compressor, there's a problem with the fuel tank in that the cap has come loose. So when it starts to shake, it flicks fuel onto the exhaust. I can't, I can't have that going onto a hot exhaust. There's a document I need to finish to put up on the wall in the container because somehow they've all gone missing of each and every oil we've got and what the oil is for, because some of the new drivers go into the container and rightly so, they don't know what oil is for what. It's only like me or Terry or my townie who's gonna remember. Also on the skip lorry, there's a rev button and the mechanism behind it, what turns the revs up, it's faulty. I'm trying to get that also. And Flo said that the loading shovel, when he's working on it, when the bucket, gets to the very top, he can feel the machine, like the power shaking a little bit. Now, I said to Flo, is that when you're at an angle, if you haven't got a lot of fuel in it, the fuel has all gone to the back of the tank? And Flo said no, irrespective, it does that, so. Hello, uh, good morning. Good morning, what do you require, sir? Driver seat belt and the and the cap for the ad blue, please. One second, and I'll give you the price and availability on these parts, okay? Thank you. I think I'm gonna turn off anyway. I make my way there. Could you do me a favor, mate? Could you just pull them from stock? Because I'm gonna be there in about 10 minutes. All right, I'll get it ready for you. Thanks, mate, see you in a minute. In this business, there are so many moving parts. People come at you from all angles and this isn't working, that isn't working, this isn't working, that isn't working. It builds up to the point where it gets on top of you and you're not on top of it. I need to get out and attack this as early as possible. Not in a little bit, in a few days, make a list, no get it, bring it all to the yard, talk to my townie, who's quite passionate about when he doesn't get what he needs, and rightly so, and get it on the lorries and get it on the machines and get them all working properly. Let me in. Come on, man, I'm on a schedule. Dazza, what's wrong? Absolutely nothing. We've got someone that wants to pick up 17 loads of MIT Type 1. Let's open an account. Let's tell them to come and get it, Dazza, and then pop into their office with a with some, I don't know, some mugs and some, some biscuits and say, whenever you want material in the area, here we are. We've also got sand and gravel. Come and get it. Come and get it. Good man, Dazza. As I've just pulled up at Volvo, Darren's called me and said, look, someone wants to collect 17 loads of Type 1 today. He told me the price. Now, the price, we're not making a lot per tonne but they're using their lorries to come and collect it. Now, I've been telling Darren and Sam, as well as our deliveries, let's let people come and get it and let's get the volume out. Come and get it, come and get it. And tell your friends, tell them to come and get it. Get the volume in and get the volume out. Well done, Dazza. Thanks, mate. Okay. So the powder tanker you saw last night is reversed into place. The time is only eight o'clock, so we can't offload yet. We're waiting for some of the lorries to come back. Tire Fitter has started with the tires which were delivered from Donovan Tires this morning, bright and early at 6 a.m. taking a look around the roll-on roll-off before it goes into Scania for test. Now we've been trying to get loads of work done before we drop it off to Scania because we don't have another one of these lorries. But sod's law, everyone's calling and asking for bits on this lorry now. So Ben was about to go for test and then somebody called and said, we need two concrete blocks immediately to block access to a site. 
I'll have a look. I'll, I'll make sure there's no car I can get down the side of either one of them. I'll make it as awkward as I can for whoever's trying to get in here. You saw us doing uh, work on Manny's job yesterday. Well, today, Manny started another job. He's flat out, and we're flat out helping him. Gaz, sorry, I need a favor. You see Sonny's volumetric I'm buying? I can't get finance on it because Sonny can't prove that he bought it from you. I need you to find the invoice <laughs> to him where he bought the truck off you and send it to me, or I can't get the finance approved. So I've agreed the finance on the volumetric and the finance company won't provide the finance because Sonny, who we're buying it from, he doesn't have the invoice of when he bought it five years ago. So the finance company said it's not enough that his name is on the logbook. That's not good enough. He needs the invoice from five years ago for the purchase. But I know the manufacturer, Rima, so I've called Gary and said, Gary, can you try to dig out the invoice, please, for Sonny so I can share it with them? They don't make it easy, do they? but I assume this is what needs to be done because they've had bad experiences. It's Saturday, and I'm in the yard. And where else would I rather be? We have a delivery from Liebherr. I think I know what it is. This would be a lot easier with a Stanley knife, but why would I go and find a Stanley knife? I'm just gonna do this. I was having a conversation last night with Sonny at the company who we are buying the volumetric lorry from. We were just comparing notes, talking about how it is in the part of the country where he's from. And I was talking about what it's like down here. And he was telling me that the majority of his concrete work is builders. And I was saying we have a mix of builders, construction companies, ground workers, and then larger infrastructure work. I was surprised to hear that 90% of the work he does is card payments. He, he gets the money immediately. And he was surprised to hear that 90% of the work we do is on account. We take between eight and 10 grand of card payments each day. I think revenue just in aggregates and concrete, nothing to do with plant hire, construction, any of that. So it's just over a million quid a month. And 90% of that is on account, which means that we're always kind of chasing our tail or waiting for money. If we got 90% of the money up front, it would be a completely different business. But that isn't the way business is done down here in London. It's so competitive. The people we're doing the work with, they're getting us to do the work, we do the work. Then at the end of the month, they're putting out a valuation. Then the client probably has a QS looking at it who ticks off what they've done. Then they get paid, then we get paid. And yes, it is what I thought it was. These are the fuel filters for the 586 loading shovel. Little update. Only 25 yacht, 25, not 20, 25 yard bin. Majority of the work on the base has been complete. The work on the opening and closing mechanism has been done. We have found um, some box steel to go here, which is sat in there. We're gonna cut out this section and cut out that section. And next week, make a go of these and the front and still the side supports. There's a lot of work in this, but we're getting there. It's that Saturday walk around time. Yesterday, you heard me talking about the document I'm making for the wall and to keep on file of all the oils, lubricants uh, for all the different uh, trucks, plant and machinery. Well, I did get somewhere, but then I thought to myself, if you're gonna do it, you might as well do it properly. So now I've had to set it down because I'm waiting for information on the different oils for the different parts of the machines and the different parts of the truck. Let me explain. So the same engine oil that's used is not the same oil that's used for the differential in here. If I look at the L860, there's a different hydraulic oil, a different engine oil. There's a slew gear oil. If I look at our forklift, there's an oil for the braking system on it. There's an oil for the engine. There's so many different variations of oil. So I've gone back to everyone, all the manufacturers and the oil supplier. I'm gonna get all of that information and I'm just gonna put everything 
on the document for the Volvos, for the Scania's, for all of the machines, put it together. Then I'm gonna go into the container, check everything we've got, get rid of any empty barrels, because there are some there, because why would anyone get rid of empty barrels? Let's keep the empty barrels with no oil in it so nobody can do the stock. Like, I mean, just leave it like that. That's the right way to do it, isn't it? Order so we've got exactly what we need and then also label those so there can be no confusion and nobody can put the wrong oil in and damage something and cost hundreds of thousands of pounds and say, but we didn't know Dan. So that needs some more work. Saturday afternoon, and we're not in the yard. We're at I had to get him out. I told him it wasn't all about work. It's about play as well. We just fed him. Now we're going to water him. And then we're going to have some more shandies. And then we go, way. Hey! Did you have anything to do with the build of Tottenham Stadium? Yes, we helped the demolition here. We took the rubbish out of here, and we took some of the concrete out of here. <laughs> You've got plenty more rubbish to take out of here. <laughs> and we actually got our seats, our original seats we've had for 20 odd years. Ah. Mm. One six four Scania, one four three, one four three T cab F twelve, one four three. It is your newest lorries. These are our newest ads to the fleet, especially the Maggie Deutz <laughs> on a wire ridge. What else you got on there? We got forklift. If you want to buy a forklift, all right. Uh, loads of skips. If you want to Shouldn't buy, them skips be out on jobs. No, we don't need them all on job. We have got over five thousand skips. You do not have five thousand skips. Man. There we are. Look, Monday morning, all ready to go. Look, Kaylee Plant. Oh, Donovan Brothers. Look at that, look, look. Nothing else is happening, they've all gone blank. We're meant to be watching football. Here we are at football after the interview I've done with Terry. Daniel now wants to take a job with me. Just Sorry, Terry, you're sacked, mate. <laughs> I'm taking a job with you. He wants to uh, pack up what he's doing. He wants to come with a professional firm like myself. It's Friday morning and we're in the yard. <laughs> so we won't watch the football, well, No, we're not going to watch the football. Right. Liverpool scored, by the way, but it was offside, just in case you missed it. <laughs> We've got a couple of complaints from a few of the neighbours. <laughs> I left Michael and Ryan to it. They're celebrating Tottenham's injury time winner. Lucky for them, unlucky for Liverpool fans. Overall, a nice afternoon, something. Um, I'm not doing it at the moment because we're not sponsoring QPR anymore and we no longer have the box. But, you know, nice change and a great stadium. And that's almost it, almost it for Asheville Weekly episode 156. I just want to say thanks to everybody who's on the journey. This is three years documenting my journey as a business owner, documenting the journeys of the people who are on the journey with me closely each day, our highs, our lows, no matter what it is, we share it, you know? We don't hide it, we try to give you the truth, and it's not always pretty, sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's sad. Who knows what tomorrow holds for any of us? Will we see another year? Will we get up to 200 episodes? Who knows? What's going to happen? We don't know. But for the moment, we'll keep sharing what we can as long as myself and the team and everyone at Asheville is capable. And all of us, thank you all for continuing to watch, participate, communicate, show love and enjoy. And that's it for Asheville Weekly episode 156 free years free years of a weekly show documenting and we need to expand the team and try and bring you more and by the way we're down to one camera because we smashed the camera so we only got one camera at the moment but these are the challenges we have to continue to overcome click here for the Asheville website click here to subscribe to our channel click here to see Asheville weekly episode one maybe you need to start again and click here for last week's episode which was number 155 can you imagine three years do you know the amount of times i haven't slept going through the night doing edits on a saturday